All right. Welcome back. We just came off the live show and I have my very guest, Sepida. And so you all know, you're going to hear me call her Seppi throughout the show because I have known Seppi for years. And so, you know, on the, on the friend down low, that's the, so that's what we call her. We call her Seppi. <laughs> <laughs> I love Seppi. <laughs> I know. It's, it's Seppi. It's just Seppi. That's how I know you. So you all know Seppi is the founder of Dawn of the Earth. And we just had an amazing live show over on Bold Brave TV. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, I highly, highly recommend it uh, because now we're going to do some post show stuff. And uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the show because it gives me an opportunity to really dive in with you, Seppi, and, you know, ask a few more questions. So let's, you know, make a couple adjustments here. And the, the first one I'll ask you is, you know, we started, uh, we left the show talking a little bit about plant medicine. What have been, um, and, and you, I love that you talked about, you, you almost advocated for it in a way. And I love that because I'm definitely an advocate. I think that plant medicine is right for a lot of people. And one of the things we were having a conversation around is its ability to help us um, go a few more layers deep and also help kind of show up in ways of like forgiveness that maybe we didn't really know before were possible. And uh, the comment I was going to make on that is that I have a lot of friends who are couples who have been doing a lot of therapies with plant medicine this year as a couple. And for those of you that are like, wait, what? Uh, a lot of you that may be going through your own relationship stuff, um, just know that outside of traditional counseling, which is your talk therapy, there are, you know, getting a coach like like Seppi, for example, who can do the somatic work with you, who can lead you through, you know, clearing some of your own traumas, because so oftentimes in relationships, that's what happens. We are just living out our traumas with our partners now and expecting them to carry all of those things that we haven't healed and vice versa. And so this gives us an opportunity to do the inner work. And it also gives us the opportunity to do the work with our partners. So you can certainly do that level of work with your partner. And then the plant medicine is just a whole nother layer. And uh, from speaking to your experience, Seppi, I just wanted to kind of like wave my hand in the air and go, yeah, me too. Because I found that one of the most beautiful parts of plant medicine, and I remember it was my very first ayahuasca ceremony specifically, where my level of self-forgiveness raised like a thousand percent, which also helped me show up and see like where are some other places in my life that I could create forgiveness. And one of them very specifically was actually around one of the kids in the family who became estranged from the family. She super was raised super religious and she just wanted nothing to do with that anymore. And in going her own way, decided, look, I want to re, I want to redo I want to redo on who I am. And I don't think that being part of physically part of this family is what I want anymore. And she cut everybody off. And it shocked me because I felt like I had a great relationship with her. And all of a sudden she was just gone and she ghosted everybody. Like there's no, nobody got a pass. Like everybody was off the list. And it was so fascinating because at first I judged it. I remember judging it and being like, she's in a cult, which is still a question, but let's leave <laughs> that aside because who knows? Um, you know, is she, uh, you know, someone else is in her head? Like I, I had all these, these judgments swimming around. And in that moment, that download that I got was, you know what? My job is to be super loving and sending her all the like healing energy that I can because to see it from her lens is she was so rattled or so hurt or so traumatized that she wanted completely out. She didn't want to be part of any of this anymore. And that to me said, there's a lot of pain there. So she's carrying a pain that I don't resonate with in this way. And that pain is so great that it would cause her to even push away the people that she loves and yeah. the, the, and people that love her. And feeling her own level of shame, guilt, or just done doneness, she didn't want to give anyone an explanation for it. So for whatever those reasons are, I had to sit with that and I said, oh, wow, like, God forgive me because I'm judging 
her experience when this is her experience like she's had an experience that was so profound and so impactful for her that it made her want to walk away and so can I be compassionate in how I'm now viewing her and can I just be happy for her and say to myself yeah, look if she's happy if she's living her best life and that's how she wants to do it then like I'm, I'm going to set her free in being that way and not be one more person in the family that's like oh what you doing over there like I don't need to be that person like not necessary. I can just be like, Hey, like all I can do is hope that she's feeling loved and that she's got what she needs and that it's going to show up for her. And I sent her, you know, when we, an email and I hope she got it, but I said to her, Hey, if I just want you to know how much I love you and you're, you're, you're living your own life and that's okay. And if you ever need to take it home, like I got you. That's you know, and that was, and that was it. Right. Cause what else can I do? And it was such a, a beautiful way to just sort of, to get under this, this place where I was like, wow, I got really conscious about it. So I want the listeners to know this. Like when you hear the word conscious, if it's not something you're already familiar with and you're like, well, you guys are throwing away around the word consciousness a lot. We were talking about that awareness, right? That aha moment. Like how can we live in more aha moments to where we can actually relate to the person that we're talking to. And in relationships, this comes up so, so, so often. And I think that that self-forgiveness is a big piece of it. And then also the ability to forgive a partner or to forgive a parent, to forgive whatever showing up in your life, um, that, that, that alone is such a freeing, it's a key. It's a key to set those, those shackles free, um, that a lot of people, I don't know, or are, are always fully tapped into. So that, that was my plant medicine experience, my very first plant medicine experience. And I just remember that. So beautiful. Open. Yeah. And, and just going from there, you know, and um, I'm so curious because as you become, you know, get your certification and you're allowed to like fully practice, what do you plan on doing with your, <laughs> with your plant medicine certification? Like what's that look like in the future? I want to transform humanity. And plant medicine plays a major role in that space when it's being practiced with integrity, safety, and it's a heart opener. So when people like this example that you have given me, it's all about the heart. I see our heart as our first brain, actually. Mm. When we're heartbroken, we isolate, we don't communicate, we don't talk. We just like, you know, she isolated herself. She chose to completely disconnect from what's there and when you do the work and you open your heart you're able to see them from a different lens your brain was telling you a different story and when you use plant medicine it gives you different sets of eyes to feel them in a different way yeah. so when we're able to tap into that power of the medicine that we're able to be open and receive one another for who we are instead of living in division, isolation, separation, labels, hate, judgment. How incredible that is. If we all can live in the space of love, community, support, safety, trust, you know? So the more I do the work with plant medicine, the more I learn that when it's being practiced with integrity, I keep using that word because I know in so many cases, it's not being practiced with integrity and it's being abused. And that's actually one of my pet peeves because I don't want, we're, there are so many people that they're doing so much work behind the scene to legalize this, to bring this to mental health, to help with PTSD, to help with depression, to help with anxiety. And it really matters as practitioners that we keep our words and promises in that space to show up from a place of authenticity and allow people to just, we're not living in our own shadows. And that's why I always go back. We need to do the work ourselves, you know, like through my own experiences of like my healing journey with my father from coming from a suppressed society from Iran having boyfriends that I literally copied the same pattern from my father. And I had all these partners that, you know, I chose again, like I'm not playing victim. I chose to be with them. And through plant medicine, I took responsibility for my choices and healing happened in that space of like freedom. 
And when you're free and you're just really living in that space of love and understanding that they served their purpose the way they did, and I showed up the way I showed up, there is no hate or anger. There is like more of like understanding and compassion. Mm -hmm. And it w it's a different level of existence. And that's why I really love that because when we're living in fear, anger, separation, all these are like low frequency emotions. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not like making it good or bad. I'm just saying like when you're living in that space, you would attract more of that energy and those emotions to your life. You're making a choice to live in that space of anger. So you, anything that's around you can trigger you and make you angrier. It's a choice that we make. It's a low frequency emotion. When we raise a, rise above that and we allow to live in gratitude and love, when we heal our hearts, when we heal our wounds, when we take responsibility, we show up differently as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister, as a brother, as a coworker, as a friend, as a partner. Like when we're healed, everyone around us, they start healing. And that's why this medicine is really, really, plant medicine is really near and dear to my heart because I've seen that how many lives has transformed, including my own life, my relationships have, have changed. And also the healing properties that it's attached to that. Sometimes it's like ancestral generational traumas that it's sitting in our body that we're not aware of that. Right. And talk therapy is not able to tap into that place of consciousness for us to, to open us to that space of like, you know, what's there for me that I really need to address. You know, I, saw my mom and my grandma that they were they were serving their husbands or their fathers or whatever like as a child what did i copy like the same this is what i've been seeing the tunnel yeah. vision of me like that's what i saw and then in in my relationship like although i was always very rebellious in that state of like living in that country but you cannot deny that I haven't copied these behaviors from like all these women around me who lived in victimhood Mm -hmm. and who thought they had no other choice, who thought that this is how life is and you got to go with it, right? So plant medicine really took me to that place of like closing cycles of victimhood, cl close those cycles of generations of like pain and suffering. Healing doesn't have to be painful, by the way. It's not like this is the choice that we make in that space that if it's going to be painful and Right. How many times after your your experience, your heart was wide open and you felt amazing? You know, it's just right. it's just what is. And when you're good with you, you're good with everyone around you. That's what yeah. I always say. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, the it's so interesting to hear you talk about um, what you're talking about when you talk about ancestral. We can also call it epigenetics. Um, yes. there's so many, there's so much to that. And even I think more recent science that's showing up around people as they study that. But what I find fascinating is in the same story that I shared with you about the, the kid that's estranged from our family. It's one of my nieces, unfortunately, but she, when it happened, it didn't shock me because my mom's sister, my mom is the youngest of seven siblings and her sister was just one, just the oldest child to her, walked into the house one day in her 20s and said, I'm done here. I'm going to change my name. I don't want any association with this part of my life. And she left and she never came back. Nobody was ever in touch wow. with her again after that. She, and I was like, wow, this is, this is playing out. Mm -hmm. I'm watching this play out. And I was like, this is somewhere deep. This is deep in this family line on this side of the family. And wow. And the strange. bravery, the wow. bravery that it comes with it, that they choose a different path, regardless of their programming, regardless yeah. of the shame, the cultural shame, yeah. you know, like you go around and you tell people, I don't talk to my family and automatically you're being judged that what's wrong with you. Why don't your family speak to you? Like, you know, like it, it, there's so much courage behind this. You know, there's right. so much bravery. I'm not encouraging others to just walk away from their family members. But I do see and recognize that her work and the way she showed up in that space, she was communicating something. Mm -hmm. She felt unseen. She felt unheard. 
and she chose to create that for herself. She did not choose to be a victim in that space, however it looked like for her. And this is very powerful. Like it, I can resonate with that because when I left my country and I decided to come to the st- States, it was exactly the same thing that I was not, regardless of whatever I've been programmed to be as a woman, I was fighting it internally and externally, which was really challenging. But then I chose to move here with my younger sister who was 17 and I was 20 years old. And I'm like, I want to create my own life and I want to create my own path and I want to create my own journey. And girl, it hasn't been (laughs) easy, but it's been the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I'm so proud of myself for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. It does take actually a a certain level of bravery. And uh, it's interesting to hear you say that because actually one of my very good friends, she did something very similar. And she said that she knew that the person that she was becoming, the person who she really was, didn't even look like her current self. And so Mm -hmm. she went on and did a whole transformation, you know, all the way to changing her name. And I was just like, wow, this is like literally making such a conscious choice about stepping into whoever you believe you are. And I think that that you're right. That does take a level of bravery and it takes a level of confidence to know that that's what's right for you, which goes back to our even earlier conversation around even the health stuff around being able to lean in and going, what is in here? How can I live my most fully expressed self? And when we talk about using even plant medicine as that catalyst. Yes. And yes. And I agree with you. There unfortunately are people within these communities that, that do abuse the process. You know, it's like, look, there's a, and then you get the other folks on the other side of that. They're like, it's all drugs. It's like, "Mm, let's actually work through this. Right. Because for for a lot of those people that say that if they go to the doctor and the doctor's like, take this blood pressure medication, you need this. They're glad to take it. Right. And so it's just, Knowing it's, the it's, knowing the side effects that it can damage their liver and their totally. kidneys, and they would yes. just pop this pill but they every still pop day it because it was <laughs> prescribed by a doctor exactly. And so, how often though are we not looking at some of these more natural holistic ways that nature's already given us that indigenous tribes have been doing for years? It's in their version of medicine because they're not in in the pharmacy putting, you know, hacking stuff together. And so much of those pharmaceuticals are made from these also, they originated from these plant medicines and what they did in mimicking them and trying to you know, mass produce them. And unfortunately here in America, making lots of money off of them yeah. um, for not the greater good, I think in many cases, but you were, you were talking about how, you know, that, that people don't always use it ethically. And I, I think that that's something we should talk about because it doesn't get talked about enough. Um, uh, uh, there's a lot of great advocation for it, but then what, what's the darker side of it? And I've actually been part of watching a group come together and say, hey, we need help with intervention because we feel like this person actually needs to go to rehab. Like we can't even, we can't even do work with this person because that's how, how crazy we think this addiction has gotten. And through that process, it was so fascinating to see that this person did not, did not think that they had any problem. And even through explaining to me how they took one drug to wake up and get focused and then another one to come down off of that drug so that they could go to sleep and then another so they could actually get a good night's sleep and stay asleep and it was like this vicious cycle and I was like how do you not see this but this was their life and it was their justification for like oh I'm 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 just being spiritual it's like really because I think we were like on the dance floor and I'm not saying you can't have a spiritual experience on the dance floor but if that's the only scenario I always see you in then I'm a little hard pressed to be like wow you have something going on and I'm not here to judge you I want to be here to support you and can you see what we're all seeing and I think that that's the other piece of it Um, for the folks that I know who have been involved with plant medicine um, even honestly, people who even approach alcohol and uh, nicotine the same way, I will watch these folks also stop and they'll be like, hey, I'm t- it's a dry year for me. So they actually have these checks and balances in place for themselves where they're, they're doing the inner work to say, is this becoming a problem? Like, do I need nicotine all the time? Because I'm, I'm relying on a substance 
to get me through a day or I'm relying on a substance to help me get to this next level. And I think it's beautiful. And I think it's a really a testament to them doing the work when they go, you know what? It's going to be a dry year for me. Matter of fact, it's going to be a dry two years for me as much as I may love the insights that I get from these things or uh, but I want to put myself in check because I feel like this could be building up to an addiction. And I think that there's, I have a lot of respect for people who can also step in and go, mm, just to check myself, I'm going to sit with this and like not do the things. And I can also work through getting in touch with spirit and getting in touch with my myself without the medicine. And I think that that's also another like beautiful route that people that are being really responsible about where they're landing can sit because people do have addictive personalities and some people don't. I can, I can pleasantly say that I definitely do not have an addictive personality. I'm like, people are like, I love fries. I can't give up French fries. I love potatoes. I'm like, no, if potatoes fell off the planet today. Like it'd, it'd be fine. It'd, it'd be fine. <laughs> it's okay. You know? And so it's, it's like those small, like little things. Right. And even as much as I love a boba tea, I'm like, look, if it really happened, I'd be sadly disappointed. And I could really live without it. So yeah. it's being able to understand like who you are, right? And what makes you tick. And that's why I don't think there's like a one shoe fits all for everybody. Addiction and trauma are related. Mm. So addiction and trauma. And I work with so many people that they struggle with addiction. And it's a very fascinating space to be with them. And the mind of the body also that it creates all these cravings for us that you want to grab that cigarette. It's like unregulated nervous system mm. that is not able to stay in that space and it thinks something else needs to come and save them. Mm. It's so fascinating working through addiction and addictive patterns. I do have addictive patterns, so I, can to I have so mm. much compassion and understanding for that. A lot of my work that I'm able to serve my clients is through my own relationship with me and not having a regulated nervous system in that space with myself. So when the stress happens, I was using substances, for example, like when I was 16 years old, I, grab, I, I had my first cigarette. And when I was in therapy, the biggest thing that showed up for me with my therapist, it was a way for me to fight the society, Iranian society, because as a woman, if you smoke, you're being seen as someone who is not a healthy woman who is like, there's so many labels and see you're a whore, you're this, you're that. And I was fighting at that age by ruining my health and my body, but wanting to have a voice and tell them I'm as equal as men. And I just, I didn't have the consciousness and awareness. And then it, for years, I lived with that habit until I got to hypnotherapy and all that. And I just learned that how these addictive patterns were just being like it was in, in my body and just learning how to work with the brain of my own body. Like when the craving happens, what is it there? You know, what is it speaking to me in that space that I feel unregulated and I feel like I need to grab something to, to calm myself. And it's all lies, by the way. Right. So just sitting with that. And one thing that you mentioned, I really think this is really important for the audience to understand. So many times I'm being labeled by so many people that they're like, Seppi, you're so spiritual because you do breath work. Seppi, you're so spiritual because you learn about psychedelics. We're all spiritual beings at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> And when it comes to breath work, I always tell them, you're, if you're not breathing, you're dead. It has nothing to do with me like being spiritual or not being spiritual. People, when there's resistance, they always find ways to label or stigmatize certain things. And being a spiritual is such a personal matter for each person. I don't associate like my psychedelic practices or breathwork practices with me being a spiritual. I have my own spiritual practices. I believe in higher power. I believe in divine energy. But that doesn't mean that because of that, I'm doing this work. I believe in transforming humanity in their body cells. Because once we release trauma we're able to heal collectively together. And this world is going to be a safer and a better place for everybody. And we're not fighting over borders and this and your race and your color and your right. gender and your sexuality. It's about like how we become one in that space 
because we healed ourselves and there's no separation. And there's no separation. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Br bringing people together instead of creating division. That's a, that's a good plan. I like, I like that intention and, uh, and that's what I'm trying to put out in the world as well. So one you're amazing. Sefi, you've been just a fun and remarkable guest. Thank you for taking the time. You're amazing on the live show. For those of you listening, if you haven't caught the live show first, you are in for a treat, go back and listen to it. And, uh, also we have a giveaway. So Sefi has been so generous. She's giving away two sessions. Uh, so two 30 minute sessions and with that, a custom blend tea. So you're getting uh, a two for one on that one, which is really, really beautiful. So just go over to Instagram at the Mary D and tell us what you loved about the show. You can also drop your comments here on YouTube. And with that, Seppi, thank you for being our guest. For those of you that want to get in touch with Seppi, her contact information is down in the show notes. Uh, I love you, sister. I love you. Thank you for being my friend all these years, for being my supporter. And I love how what you're doing for the planet, what you're doing for the humanity. And thank you for having me to be a part of this creation. You're a badass, sister. Oh, you are a badass. Thank you. Thank you, thank you from, from one badass to another. Uh, I acknowledge you and I'm so glad you're alive. And, uh, thank and with you. that, we will see you all back here for, uh, you know, another episode. Uh, stay tuned. And thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Ciao.